Hi everyone! Welcome back to video number two in the series The Awakened Child. Today I want to talk to you about who is the awakened child. And this got me thinking about my own journey to my own spiritual awakening and how I came to this realization, this knowing that I'm so much more than a physical being. I'm so much more than this human body. So in my previous video, I briefly touched base on the darkness that I felt in my life and the abuse that I had gone through as a young child. But this video, I want to talk to you about who exactly is the awakened child and what does it mean to be the awakened child in that parent-child relationship. The awakened child is someone who has this deeper knowing, who has this deeper connection, who knows that they are more than just the physicality of this experience they're having called human, called life. There is this deeper desire to ask these questions, who am I? Why am I here? Why did I choose these people as my parents? Why are these people my parents? What's my purpose? What am I here to do? So when you go through that process of, of being awakened to the truth of who you are, and sometimes this happens in very traumatic ways, like near-death experiences or um, depression or suicide or just some kind of trauma or challenge or struggle or adversity you faced, is most of the times where most of us wake up. Some of us, it doesn't happen like that way. But you have this deeper knowing and this higher attuned consciousness about life. You're someone who's very observational. You'll question why do we do what we do? I mean, why am I taught to believe in a God that is outside of me? Why do I go to Sunday church? You have this deeper longing to know more why it is the way it is and why we're so bound by limits and norms and expectations and conditioning. So that's the awakened child. You have this deeper desire to know why you're here and who you really are. And when you have that awakening and you go through this process of fully realizing who you really are, your truth as a spiritual being, having a human experience, what happens is it forms a disconnect among the relationships in your life, especially the relationship with your parents and family members. And this is something that happened to me, where I felt like I couldn't relate to my parents anymore. I couldn't relate to my upbringing, my culture, um, my religion anymore, because it just it just felt too limiting. It felt like I was being put in a box, and, I, and who I really was wasn't being honored or celebrated or appreciated or being um, valued or given the space to be. So what do you do then? How do you continue to have this connection, this relationship with your parents when you have this heightened level of awareness and consciousness of who you are and you see them continuing to be defined by norms and conditioning and programming and living in fear, living in scarcity, living in lack, living without any kind of connection to their soul, to their spirit. There's a saying that if you want to know how spiritually evolved you are, go spend a weekend or a week with your family because all your shit comes back up. All the conditioning, all the programming, all your um, insecurities, who, what the parts of yourself, your shadow self, the parts of yourself that you haven't faced, all comes, at, comes back up. If you were the awakened child in the parent-child relationship, how to start nurturing that relationship with your parents in a way that is helpful, that is supporting, but most of all that is loving. Because sometimes what we like to do is we just we just say, I don't want to deal with this, they don't get me, they don't understand me, um, it's difficult to communicate with them, they just don't see life the way I see it, that's where, that's where I am. It's so hard to just put it aside and shut it away and say, I don't want to deal with it. But that just creates um, separation and that creates disconnect in between that relationship. And then that relationship starts affecting the other areas or other relationships in your life because it's unfinished business. So you're carrying this emotional weight or this emotional um, energy with you because you're not able to connect with the people who are probably the most important people in your life is your parents because of because, because they're the reason you were born. They were the medium through 
your life came into existence, your physical life came into existence. So how do we begin to have that connection? How do we begin to nurture that connection with our parents when we're the awakened child in the relationship? And I think for me, it boils down to a lot of patience, a lot of compassion, just understanding that they don't know any better. This is all that they know and just holding the space to just let them kind of evolve at their own pace. But you being that um, rebel or you being that child that's the black sheep or you being that child that has this out of box thinking is just a call to their own soul's evolution. So you keep doing what you're doing. You keep following love. You keep honoring your soul. You keep living your truth because eventually what will happen is that will collapse into that relationship and it will nurture this deeper connection with your parents and that's the process i'm currently going through with myself and i'm like the biggest rebel in my family because my thinking and the way i live the way i perceive the way i am is so out of the box is so different than what my societal conditioning has and what my cultural conditioning has been and the parenting my parent, parents have given that it's totally um, shunned, it's not accepted, and, but at the same exact time I know that I'm honoring my truth and understanding who I am, that I'm really, really choosing to live a soul-powered life, a spiritual life that is rooted in love, kind of compassion, but most of all that's doing my part in elevating the consciousness of the planet. So when you're the awakened child in a relationship, some of the questions that you may have is, how do I have a better relationship with my parents that's rooted in love, that isn't rooted in resentment, that's not rooted in disconnection from them? How do I get my parents to agree with my life choices when I know that what I'm doing, the actions I'm taking, the decisions I'm making are all based in love? because the normal programming and the conditioning of the world is take your decisions, make your actions always based in lack and scarcity and fear. And when you have this deeper awareness of who you are, you know that love is the answer. You always make your decisions, you take your actions rooted in love. So how do you, how do you get your parents to do the choices you're making? How do you get your parents to do with the lifestyle you wanna live? How do you get your parents to agree with the person you love? Um, so these are all the things the awakened child has to experience in this parent-child relationship because sometimes the parents are so deeply programmed in their way of life in the way that they have been brought up and the condition that they've received. What most of the time happens is that it's, it gets put into a box. If you don't fit into their perception of reality, what you're doing is considered wrong, is not considered right, is not considered the best thing for you. And then that's where the disagreements start happening and the confusion and the blame and the resentment and the fights and the arguments and shit like that starts happening. So as I'm discovering this myself, you'll be going on, going along on this journey with me is how to, how to still stay grounded and anchored in your truth all while honoring and respecting the things your parents kind of essentially expect from you and how to detach yourself from their expectation know that your worth your value your happiness your um ability to do anything is not dependent on someone else's reality of you it's based purely on what you allow yourself to believe what you think you're capable of and who you're choosing to be at all times love the presence of love even love and honoring your truth or going all of that and becoming this identity that is not serving you but serving someone else someone else's false image of you based on their perceptions their expectations and their knowing of who they think you are now i want to talk to you about more of my story as the awakened child and how i became this awakened child so I brief, briefly touched base on the abuse I went through as a young, young child and dark, dark years as an adolescent and teenager. And for me, all of that darkness that I felt kind of became that catalyst for me waking up, essentially. So the darkness that I did go through was a lot of mental and um, emotional abuse. Um, constantly being told I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy enough, I'm not capable enough, I'm useless, I'm worthless, um, I can never do anything right. And 
you, when, when the constant feedback you're receiving is negative, is not doing anything to uplift you, the way you start perceiving and being is this low, depressed human who thinks nothing of themselves, who then has really poor self-talk, really negative self-talk, and a very, very low self-image and low self-esteem, no confidence. So that's the way I was brought up. I was not often given positive reassurance or, yay, good job, you did amazing. There was a lot of pressure to have good grades, to get in a good college, to get a good job, to have a good life, make a lot of money. And so I put a lot of pressure on that. And because of that pressure, I really didn't um, live up to the expectations that were expected of me. And I always felt like a failure, um, not good enough, unworthy, and etc. So it got to the point where I couldn't take it anymore, basically, after I had told my dad that I didn't want to be a doctor. And his reaction was probably something I'll never forget. He looked at me and said, you broke my dreams. And I said, exactly, they weren't my dreams. And to him, he doesn't understand that. He still doesn't get it to this day. But that kind of sparked something within me because here I was, for the first time in my life, I had the balls, the courage to go and stand up and be courageous and say, this is not what I want because it's what you want for me. And then that spiraled into me having the courage to just pursue something that I liked and keep basically trying to figure out what it was that I was here to do which eventually led me to the work I do now. But the process to getting here was just so difficult and long and strenuous and just challenging because I had constant feedback telling me I'm not good enough, what you're doing is wrong, I'm not proud of you, you're a failure, you're, this is not what we expected of you, you're our oldest child, etc., etc., etc. And so I had a lot more, I guess, demons or um, challenges to get through than the average person. But I'm not saying that not even the average person doesn't face it, we all do. But to kind of sit here today and say, no, I am valuable, what I'm doing is valuable, and I add value to this world, it's taken me a long time to say that. And so when I went through this whole journey of this process of darkness and depression and suicide and not having the support system I wanted, the emotional and mental support system, I eventually like collapsed. I got on my hands and knees one day and I said, I am so tired of this. I want to experience something better because I was too much of a coward to take my own life. And I use the word coward in a way because it requires some kind of bravery for a human to take their own life. But taking your life is never the answer. Don't ever do that. It's not the answer. It always gets better. It does get better. It has gotten better. So that became that catalyst for my awakening. And now I sit here and I realize that I needed to go through what I went through to become the person I am right now because I have passion, I have drive, I have motivation, I have purpose, all because of what I went through. My purpose, I greatly believe, is to be an elevator of consciousness, is to be the expression of love, and to solely, fully embody who I am because who I am has never been accepted. And that's why I kind of relate a lot to the LGBT movement because it's this concept of shutting down who they are, their identity. Because when your identity isn't accepted by the people who supposedly love you, it becomes really hard to live with yourself because then you don't know who you are. You're constantly trying to gain approval, validation, worthiness from things outside of you, and you don't really build this positive, healthy, happy, holy, spiritually based soul power relationship with yourself. You keep seeking other things outside of you to give you the meaning, the meaning you're looking for because your identity hasn't been accepted by somebody else or people who gave you birth. So that's where I was, and I had to basically just say, fuck that. <laughs> I need to find meaning and purpose and value within myself. I need to rest in that awareness. And that's where this whole journey that I've been doing and filming these videos and writing these posts started three years ago. So you can go back to my archives on YouTube and you can see that I specifically talk about things that I go through myself because I know that what I go through is some way going to help you as well. So that's my story in a little itty bitty nutshell. But if you want to read more of my story, I've written about it in much more detail in a blog post which I will link down below and I'm going to share a little bit more bits of it in a blog post that's going to go hand in hand with this video over on website at conjuralpande.com. I really hope this video served you. If you're the awakened child in the parent-child relationship, tell me how you became the awakened child 
and the process that you went through and some what are what what has been the greatest gift you received and what has been something that's been the hardest challenge to overcome i really hope to hear from you wherever you are in the world sending you lots of love light have a beautiful day stay open